let's take a quick look at the sum of geometric series so if you recall when we're talking about geometric progression we started by listing out the terms in which we wrote a first time as a second time is a r where r is the common ratio then we had a r squared then we had a r cube so now Geometric series just means the addition of the terms in the geometric progression. So when we add those terms together, a plus a r plus a r squared to infinity, then we have what the geometric series. So the formula for the geometric series s is given as a into bracket r base by n minus one over r minus one, where n is number of terms, r is the common ratio, and a is the first term. So now you have to note that this formula can be in two different forms. So in this first form, you have r raised by n minus r and the denominator you have r minus 1. So this only holds when r is greater than 1. So when the common ratio is greater than 1, like 2, 3 or 1 and half, when it's greater than 1, you make use of this formula. The r term comes before the 1. But when the value of r is less than 1, then you have 1 minus r raised by n and the denominator becomes 1 minus r but the idea is just the same it's just the value of r that determines which of the form to use when it is greater than 1 you make use of this form and when it is less than 1 you make use of this form so let's solve an example now to explain the idea of geometric series so a gp has 6 terms if the third and the fourth term are 28 and minus 26 respectively find a the first term and b the sum of the gp so we are told that it has a total of six terms and we are told that the third term now you know that the nth term of the gp is given as a r raised by n minus one so the third term will be what a r raised by three minus one which is what a half squared and that is given as well 28 now I'm giving the fourth term. So the fourth term now will be what a r raised by four minus one, which is a r cube, and that will be equal to what minus fifty six. So if you recall, how would we calculate the common ratio? The common ratio is gotten by dividing two consecutive terms. So by dividing this by this, by dividing a r cube over a r squared, we get r. So this is like dividing the fourth term by the third term. So we have what minus fifty six divided by 28 and what do we get we get our common ratio to be what minus 2 so the value of the common ratio is minus 2 so a we are told to find the first term so to find the first term we know that the third term is 28 so we can write what the third term is given as a half squared is equal to 28 and now i know that the value of r is minus 2 so i can substitute that to the value of the common ratio here so that becomes a into bracket minus 2 squared is equal to 28. And what does that become? Minus 2 squared is minus 2 times minus 2, and that is 4. So that becomes 4a is equal to 28. And if I divide both sides by 4, it results in a equals to 7. 28 divided by 4 is 7. So the first term is 7. Now, the second question, the B part, asks us to find the sum of the GP. Now, we ask ourselves what is the value of r. As you can see, in this case, our r is what? Minus 2. And we know that minus 2 is less than 1. So we'll make use of the second form of the formula. And the second form says that what? S is equals to a into bracket 1 minus r raised by n over 1 minus r. So we can find the sum of the GP. And we're told that the number of terms that the GP has have a 6. So we know that n is equal to 6. Now, we found our first term to be equal to 7. I know that our common ratio is minus 2. So the sum of the GP will be given as our first term is 7 into bracket 1 minus our common ratio is minus 2, then raised to the power 6, which is the number of them, over 1 minus, and our R result minus 2. So what does that become? 7 into bracket 1 minus Minus 2 raised power 6 is the same thing as saying minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2, minus two 6 places and that gives us what 64. So we have 64 then over 
then one minus times minus gives me plus so plus two so what does that give me i have seven times what one minus 64 is minus 63 and two plus one is three so three here goes one and three here goes what minus 21 so i have s to be equal to seven times minus 21 and that gives me minus 147 so the sum of the gp is what minus 147 now let's move on to the concept of sum to infinity so remember when we talked about types of series and we talked about infinite series i mentioned that this is series that extends from the first term to infinity like they don't have no end so now how do we calculate the sum of gp to infinity so this formula is only applicable to cases in which the common ratio lies between minus one and plus one and examples of this will be what minus two over five minus three over five minus half zero half three over seven so all fractional numbers such as this that lie between minus one and one there's a formula to find the sum to infinity and how do we come about the formula so now we know that the sum to infinity is given by a into bracket one minus r raised by a over one minus r so now let's assume r is a number that lies between minus one and one so for example let's assume that the value of r is half so let's assume that the value of r is half so what happens as we raise half to say the power of one let n be one so half raised to the power one is what is half how about half raised to the power two what that become that becomes one over four what about half raised to the power three that becomes one over eight one over two raised to the power four becomes what one over sixteen one over two raised to the power five becomes one over thirty two so as you can see as the value of n increases the value of r raised to the n becomes smaller 1 over 8 is smaller than 1 over 4, 1 over 16 is smaller than 1 over 8, 1 over 32 is smaller than 1 over 16. So as we continue raising the power of n to infinity, so when we have 1 minus 2 raised to the power infinity, this value becomes so small that we can assume that it is 0. So what happens at this condition is satisfied and n tends to infinity? The term r raised to the power n tends to 0. So this term r raised to the power n tends to 0. If r is between minus one and one. So if r raised by n tends to zero, we can replace r raised by n term as zero, and that becomes what? S to infinity is equals to a over one minus r. So the sum to infinity of a geometric progression is given as a over one minus r, where a is the first term and r is the common ratio. Let's look at one example. So we're told that the sum to infinity of a GP is 60. If the first term of the series is 12, find the third term. So now we know that the sum to infinity s is given as what? a over 1 minus r. I was told that the sum to infinity is what? 60. The sum to infinity is what? 60. And that the first term is 12. So we can easily find the common ratio with this formula. So we know that what? 60 will be equal to the first term is what? 12 over 1 minus r so when i cross multiply i have 60 into back 1 minus r is equals to 12 so i have 60 minus 60 r is equals to 12 so minus 60 r is equals to 12 minus 16. so what does that become minus 60 r equals to 12 minus 60 is minus 48 if i divide both sides by minus 16 I have what r being equals to, and I simplify this to the lowest term, I get r being equals to what 4 over 5. So the common ratio is 4 over 5. And as you can see, this value lies between minus 1 and 1. So the question now asks us to find the third term, which find the third term. So now what is the formula for calculating the nth term of a GP is given by what? By a raised to the power a r raised to the power n minus 1. So now at to find the third term, that means where n is equal to 3. And we, have, we know that the first term is what? Is 12. And we have found our common ratio to be 4 
over 5. So how do we go about this? We just sub 2. So u theorem now will be equal to my first term is 12 and my common ratio is 4 over 5. Then raised by my third term, n is 3, 3 minus 1. So that becomes 12 times 4 over 5 raised by 2. And that becomes 12 times 4 squared is what? 16 and 5 squared is what? 25. So u theorem now becomes 12 times 16 is 192 over 25. And if you want to write it in decimal, it's the same as 7.68. So as you can see now, the third term of this series is 7.68. So what do we do? By the condition given to us that the sum to infinity is 60, we use that to find the common ratio. And when we find the common ratio, then we use the common ratio to find the third term by using the formula for the nth term of a geometric progression. So this pretty much sums up what you need to know with relations to geometric series.